and welcome back to the Bitter Lemon YouTube channel. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that's what I'm calling it, but we're going to go with it for now. I am coming at you on May 31st, Memorial Day. As you can see, I am still not dressing up or getting ready for these videos. I am just doing things as I can and this is what I can do today. <laughs> so here we are in front of what appears to be like my messy desk, even though the desk itself is not messy. So maybe I'll just keep it down here. Okay, so um, this is my end of the month book discussion, which um, let's talk a little bit about my May reading. So I think in April, I read something like 10 books, which is a ton. Um, and in previous end of month book discussions, I've talked about how I'm following along with this plan that I set forth at the beginning of the year, where I kind of laid out like what books I wanted to read in what months. And I have not totally abandoned that idea, but it's just like not working out for me right now. Mostly that's because for a while I kept getting library books and you can only have those for two weeks and it was just, I couldn't read the library books and the books on my list and so I did make a change in the right direction where I only put books on my reserve list that had long wait times so I'm not being bombarded with um so many library books. So that was my issue number one, um, which affected my May reading. The other thing is um, in April, well, honestly, like January, February, March, and some in April, I really had just a low workload, which meant I had a lot more time on my hands to read and work on personal project. And I am not having that um, as an issue anymore. I'm actually having the opposite problem where I have a ton of work, so much work that, um, it's been a real struggle, honestly. Um, not just like, oh, I don't have time to read, but like, um, oh, I don't have time to sleep and oh, I don't have time to, um, take care of myself mentally and physically. So it's been a bit of a rough couple weeks. Um, however, um, reading is so important to me and so it really bothers me when I don't have time or I don't feel like I have time. Um, I don't feel like I can properly make time to sit down and read. So some of the books that I have to talk about are audiobooks which right now seems to be like the best way that I can still get my reading in. I know it's not the same as reading but I definitely think it still counts. If you're an audiobook person I go you. Um, and if you're an audiobook person and you have any recommendations, let me know because I think it's so hard to find a good audiobook. But anyway, I just wanted to put that out there that I know no matter how many books I read in a month, even if it's two, that sometimes is a lot more than other people read. And I always have people ask me, like, how do you have time to read? And the truth is, I mean, no one usually has just hours and hours of time sitting around reading you really have to make a, make it a priority and even sometimes um, that is a struggle and it's it's not something to beat yourself up over but I think finding ways because I mean for me like reading is a form of self-care so it's like I need time to read you know um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I don't have as many books to share this month and it's really tough like I'm an achiever I'm someone that likes to get things done I like finishing books I like finishing things and so when I was realizing like this a week ago, I'm like, gosh, I really have not read any books in the month, in this month. Um, that's just the way it goes sometimes. But I still have five books to share with you. So I'm pulling up my Goodreads app. So I feel like um, actually when I looked back, I was like, wow, it's been an interesting reading month. So let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> this actually, like, looking back, I'm like, wow. Okay. First book we have is called Girls with Bright Futures by Tracy Dobmeyer and Wendy Katzman. I think I'm probably butchering Tracy's last name, and I apologize. Um, this is what the cover looks like. I love the cover. 
this was the I finished reading this book on May 1 so I was reading a majority of it during the month of April I remember reading this book because I went um, we had a special election in Austin and I was reading this while I was waiting in line to vote so this is sort of like um, the story is that you have three girls they go to like a really prestigious high school and it's time for all the applications for college and basically it's like their different stories about what their parents are willing to like put these girls through in order to get them accepted into the best college and one of the girls gets into an accident like a car accident and the medical professionals on site think that it was something that happened on purpose so then it becomes kind of like this mystery around who if someone did it who did it why did they do it and it almost was a mix of like it's not incredibly dark I know that that plot sounds a little bit dark but it's almost like a mix of like the varsity blues scandal combined with almost like a where'd you go Bernadette because there's text messages that you're following there's emails that you're following to try and figure out this mystery and there is a bit of humor in it because the emails and text messages are so catty and like petty um I really enjoyed this book um but it definitely is like it's different, but I enjoy, I really like any sort of book that has to do with like academic, academia, higher ed, any of that um, collegiate type. So I enjoyed this one. Okay, the next one is probably going to be a controversial one. Well, okay. The picture is really blurry, but this is um, A Mother's Reckoning, Living in the Aftermath of Tragedy by Sue Klebold. This is what it looks like, the cover. Um, Sue Klebold is the mother of Dylan Klebold, who was one of the Columbine shooters. Um, this is actually a book that I have had on my TBR list for quite some time because I um, read Columbine by Dave Cullen and that really educated me a lot about Columbine and like the 24-hour news cycle and everything that goes into reporting stories like that so as a news junkie I have a bit of obsession with like books like that books that are surrounding true crime um, and so this book was actually on my list because I heard it was just a different perspective and an interesting perspective. Um, and in Columbine by Dave Cullen, he brings up the fact that, you know, um, the parents, the families, even the friends of these two uh, high schoolers that did this crime, that committed these murders, they still died too. They still had families that were grieving for them and were mourning the loss of the other kids, the other innocent lives lost. And they're probably the most hated people in town. Um, so this book from Sue is, you know, honestly, um, being just totally transparent here, I had a mix of emotions reading this book. Um, on the one hand, you do feel, um, sadness for her that she lost her son and it was not, um, she never expected her son to do this crime, of course, and she felt sadness, you felt sadness for the victims all over again of Columbine and you felt sadness that, I mean, she kind of paid the price for what her son did. Um, but on the other hand, you're like, how am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Even though, like, she didn't do it. it. It's just, it's honestly kind of a weird place to be. Like, I went back and forth so much while reading it because there were times when I was just like, okay, I can't, I can't feel sorry for you. And then there's other times when I'm like, wow, this is so sad. So, I'm not going to recommend this 
like I don't know who this book would be for. I personally like I'm glad I read it because it is a totally different perspective. She's not asking for pity. She's not asking for money. I mean the the pro the profit from the book went toward um you know mental health um and like I think suicide um charities. And so you can't hate on that. Um she's also pretty much dedicated to her life to like speaking out, you know, against um, or speaking out for like mental health causes, suicide, and like gun reform. Um, but I guess if you are someone, I mean, she really does. This is on this book is honestly about yes, it's about you know, kind of what happened at Columbine, but it's honestly a lot of like her going back from like the time her son was born. And looking back at her life, trying to figure out what did I do? What did I do wrong? What did I do to make this happen? Could I have changed anything I did to make this not happen? Um, and that is honestly really sad because um, the parts that she shares about her son in the book, it sounds like he was like a pretty normal um, teenager. And so you can understand, like, she probably has just such a lack of closure um, with all of it. And, yeah, it's just, all of it is, is really sad. So I can understand why someone would not want to read this book, but I can also understand, like, why someone would want to read this book. And the reviews on it were pretty mixed, too. I think it's just, like, a hard um, viewpoint to to resonate with, you know? I mean, probably other people, there's plenty of other people that are probably in her similar position. So there's that, but I am glad I read it. I was kind of waiting for like the right time to read it, but I don't know if there's any right time to read that. Um, if you are looking for a book that is, is like strictly educational on Columbine, I definitely would recommend uh, Dave Collins' book, or if you're interested in that same thing for Parkland, he also wrote one called Parkland. Um, like I said, I'm a huge news junkie, so I enjoyed reading those books. Um, I also grew up in a time when, like, Columbine changed my life. Like, I was in seventh grade when that happened, so, um, Columbine, like, forever shaped, like, my life at school, um, in high school, like, it affected me in, in many ways. So, I think those are kind of, like, why I resonate with it as well. But, that is the one I wrote there okay this next one wow was such a disappointment um it's called the sweet taste of muscadines love the cover beautiful cover this is by Pamela Terry this is her um debut novel and it had a lot of, I, I mean I feel like it had a lot of press I pre-ordered this like in November and you know it just came out came out in March I believe and it was being compared to um, where the crowd had seen. It ain't that, okay? I, I, like, try never to fall for those things, like, for lovers of where the crowd had seen, read this. It's never right. Um, so, I think it was only compared to that because it's a southern book. There is a mystery about a death, but it is, I loved where the crowd had seen, um, I know not everyone did, but this book is not that. So anyway, this book follows, um, when the book starts off, like, I can't even remember what the main character name is. That's how much my, um, Lila, I guess is her, Leela, Lila, let's say Lila. <laughs> So Lila's mother, like when the book opens, Lila's mother is found dead in the muscadine, I don't want to say field, muscadine, um, marsh, swamp, whatever, where the muscadines, <laughs> where the muscadines sing. Um, her mother is found dead in the muscadine garden, in the muscadines, right outside like her house. But it's like at 6 a.m. in the morning and she's found like laying there in a way that could or could not be suspicious. And uh, Lila's sister calls and said, you know, mom, 
um, passed away. She was found in the Muscadines. Um, and everyone is kind of like thinks it's a little weird, but they move forth with um, having like a Shiva type um, service at their at her house for her. Um, but as it continues, like, there's a little bit of, like, speculation about why was she in the Muscadines at 6 a.m. And they discover, basically, like, this kind of secret door, uh, I'm assuming kind of, like, on the cover, this secret door where they find the key to it, and inside this secret door is a box of letters that reveals a giant secret from the mom's past, but it also affects the children. I won't give it away. Um, I get, you know, in all honesty, it's like when I'm saying this plot, it sounds interesting, but like I just was not invested. And that very well could have been just because I've been so busy and I was not giving myself the time to be invested. But I think it's also because... Um, and if you read Saint X, um, that book really kind of opened my eyes to the fact that I assume everything is a, a huge crime and someone needs to be held accountable. And so with this book, um, maybe it's just because I went into it like assuming like, oh my god, obviously the mom was like murdered and we need to find the killer when like that is not, this book is not that um so maybe I was just like disappointed from that <laughs> I don't know but like it, it there were a mixture of views on Goodreads about this book but it was more so about the writing style and the language and I really liked it I like writing that is detailed and when you get into southern lit um you're gonna get those like kind of flowery writing having lived in the south I live in the south I live in Texas I appreciate that so that didn't bother me at all I think the plot was just a little bit disappointing um, in order for me to really be invested in the book it takes a lot to build up the characters so that I really care about what's happening and I just didn't they find the door I was I thought that was cool find the box of letters okay this big secret I just didn't care so it was not my favorite book. Um, yeah. Okay. The next book I read is called The Lies That Bind by Emily Giffen. And this is actually one I have just listened to over this weekend. Um, Emily Giffen, actually, let me click on her because she has written a couple other books Okay, so she wrote, like, the Something Borrowed, Something Blue books. I knew she sounded familiar. So I, I read All We Ever Wanted um, last year. Let me see if there's anything else. Is that it? I think maybe I read some of, maybe I've just seen these, like, Where We Belong and Something Borrowed, Heart of the Matter baby proof hmm okay but she's kind of like I put her in the same category as like your shopaholic like the Sophie Kinsella um those type type of rom-com rom type of books and I don't mean that insulting like I love those those books excuse me um so I just was looking for a book that was like immediately available via audio on, on the library app and that one was available and I was like okay Emily Giffen and I think I read like the first description of the book and I was like okay yeah I'm reading this um Cicely okay so this book is about it follows Cicely who's like an aspiring writer she lives in New York City she just broke up with her longtime boyfriend and she meets this guy Grant at a bar and he like sweeps her off their feet and they kind of had this like whirlwind romance but when they go away for a weekend to his cabin you know she learns a lot more about him and like how his parents have passed away and like his um 
mom passed away or his dad passed away from ALS and like the gene was passed on to his brother so it's like this a lot of drama about how like his brother has ALS and like there's not a cure and he has it really bad and so he's trying the bro Grant is trying to help the brother get treatment and like the best treatment is in London so like they go to London and she go uh, Cicely goes and like visits them in London but Grant introduces her as like his friend and so that kind of pisses her off but like when he comes back from London they're like about to have a conversation like what was that about but then September 11th happens and Grant is like a financial advisor that works in the Twin Towers and she doesn't hear from him like in the days after September 11th and so her and her friend are like out looking around in the city at all the different missing posters and they come across one for him. So her friend calls the number on the missing poster and I'm not going to spoil it but it's somebody unexpected that answers the phone and this results in so many other twists like I listened to the audiobook, okay, and, like, I think it was 11 hours or something, and all through this, like, ALS conversation, I was like, I don't know how much I can listen to. Like, I don't really do well listening to, like, terminal illness type content because I lost my dad to cancer, um, so I was just like, I don't know if this book is, like, worth listening to this, and then this twist happened where they made the phone call, and I was like, okay, I guess I'm in this for the ride, and wow, you better buckle up because there are twists and turns all over the freaking place. It was so not what I expected out of this book. Like, at parts, it was a bit much. I kept, like, I was, like, doing things around my house, like, cooking, cleaning, and I just kept being like, oh, my God. Like, so I guess for, like, an audiobook, it was pretty good because it kept me interested. But um, I will say... Some, I don't know. I'm really picky about audiobooks, and in this one, it's, like, the same person that does all the voices, including, like, the male voices, which I just find to be really strange. I know that's common in audiobooks, but I prefer if they have different people, um, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, I will say if you're into this kind of, if you like a lot of twists and turns, if you're into sort of, like, a tawdry love affair, um... This is probably right up your alley. It was not really what I was expecting from Emily Giffen. Um, but now that I realize I've only read one other book of hers, like who am I to say like what she should have written and what she should have not written. So maybe that's just her style. I don't know. But um, it kept me entertained, so I gave it three stars on Goodreads. You know, I mean, what more can you ask for? And then I just finished um, the fifth book of the month today, and it's called I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. This is the cover. Oh, the cover's so cute. I love, like, all the pastels. Um, so, actually, I think it was about two months ago, I made a reading list on my blog, The Bitter Lemon, um, that was, I think, 12 or 15 books by Asian and Pacific Islander American authors, and this book was one of the books I recommended. Um, so I was excited to see this one available for audio. Um, let me just double check one thing. I'm pretty sure it is a YA novel. Yes. Okay, it is a YA novel. I just wanted to make sure. Um, I'll explain it in a second. So um, this is a YA novel, and it's about um, a girl named Skye, and she is auditioning to be the next K-pop star in a, like, competition-type television show that kind of reminds me of, like, American Idol, only for K-pop, um, like a BTS-style band. Um... And from the jump, you learn that Skye is a curvier gal, and she gets a lot of flack about her weight from her family. And I will say that I listened to the audio of this, 
And, I mean, I think it would have been just as hard to read, but some of the parts where, like, her parents are basically, like, fat-shaming her is a little tough to hear. Um, but I think that's a reality in some households and in some cultures. It's just, I mean, that's the way it is. So, um, I definitely appreciate, like, the author putting, like, the reality of the situation in the book. Um, because it sort of adds to her challenge of getting on this television show and hopefully winning the competition, right? Is that she has to, like, boost her confidence herself because her family, like, thinks she that she's too fat to be on the show. Um, this book was, it said, like, I did it again. See, it said, like, for readers of Julie Murphy, which she's also a YA novel from Texas, a YA novelist from Texas, and a lot of her characters are very out of the box, whether they're overweight, um, part of LGBTQ plus family, um, or just like out of the norm in some way. Um, so I can definitely, I can definitely see the resemblance. Um, I enjoy Julie Murphy's books a lot more than I like this one. No offense to this one. I just freaking love Julie Murphy. Everything she writes is chef's kiss. Um, but anyway, I thought this story was really sweet. I don't think I would uh, recommend the audio version. I just felt like the audio version, I felt like the person who was reading the audio was like talking down to me. <laughs> like, I don't know how to else to explain it other than that. But the story itself is so sweet. And it's sort of an interesting like insider's look into like a television competition show. If you're someone that likes that kind of thing I think you would probably love this book that's I watched The Voice I've never watched American Idol but I felt like um when I read the description for this book when I was making my reading list a few months ago I was like okay this sounds pretty cool it's kind of like if you're into k-pop if you're into pop culture if you're into television competition shows um it even has a little bit um of a romance storyline in there and there's also a little bit of like of course the body positivity but also um like she kind of like questions her sexuality so there's a lot of themes running through this book that um I appreciate that they were in there you don't really see a lot of that in YA but I think YA is definitely changing and this is a sign of that. So I thought it was really good. The reviews on this are really good. It has more than four stars um, on Goodreads. So that's really good. Um, as far as what am I reading for June, I really would like to return back to my chart that I set out to read because I have a big stack of books that I pulled for myself to read and I was so excited to read them and I have not read very many of them to be quite honest um but like I said audiobooks seem to be like the answer for me right now and I just downloaded another audiobook um tonight since I finished one and it's gonna be um Another one that was on my Asian and Pacific Islander Amer American authors list, and that's Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. I'll show you the cover. It's like got the noodles on it. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Um, June is a new month, and maybe I will have more time to actually sit down and read a book. Um, the outlook does not look like that will be the case but you never know maybe I'll find myself with a pool day and a book um who knows so what have you guys been reading this month I would love to know also if you have any good audiobook recommendations that would be awesome and I think that's it um I know not a lot of people read these I do not promote these videos at all because I know they probably just seem really half-assed and lazy but it's really just because I have been pressed for time and I still I don't want the time to be the reason that I don't post these I don't want it to be like oh I'm not going to post a YouTube video because I have to set up a perfect background and put on makeup and make sure my hair looks great so 
I appreciate being able to just come as I am and offer up the books I've read and it is my goal to do one of these every month and so far so good so maybe by December I'll like actually get my act together but who knows maybe not um I hope you guys had a great month and I hope you guys read awesome books in June you can keep up with me on Goodreads my username is the bitter lemon I keep really good track of everything I'm reading on there on the blog thebitterlemon.com I just recently posted a summer reading guide which is 25 titles for waterside reading I'm really proud of this list I put together and it is a mix of all genres um, I do post book reviews on The Bitter Lemon, but if it's something that's a book I didn't really like, I won't post it because I don't see the point in like promoting books that I can't stand behind um, and I don't want to like openly bash somebody. Um, so I haven't posted about a book in a while because I just haven't read one that I absolutely loved. I posted about the Sue Klebold one because I felt like that was controversial and interesting, but yeah. So thank you guys again for watching. I hope you have a great month. Read some good books and let me know what you're up to. Bye.